for starting us off with great conversations and making connections with people. And that's actually how I got to know our speakers in the first place. Um, I didn't tell them I was going to tell this story, but when I first moved to South Bend, um, I was part of a community supported agriculture program. And so I was out picking greens with his wife. And uh, we got to talking about what our interests were and what we'd like to do, and uh, realized we had a lot of shared interests. And we started uh, working in a community garden together. And then um, we realized who each other's you know, families were, made those connections. And then one day I met the Y, working out, and who's there but our speaker. Um, and so then we started. I don't even know if that's how we started talking. It's probably how we started talking. That's where we mostly talk. <laughs> right there. That's where we talk now. <laughs> uh, so my point is, making these connections with people, although whoever you met tonight, you might not ever talk to again, um, but they might be connecting you to somebody in our community um, that will help advance your goals, aspirations, and dreams, and connect you to other people. So keep talking uh, to one another. You just never know where that's going to end up. You could be hosting the person you just met talk or a party. Uh, anyway, thank you for starting us off with lots of enthusiasm. I'm going to stop talking for a while uh, because I'm really happy to finally have uh, Greg Keel of Keel Architecture and Planning here. So please help me give a warm welcome. Excuse me, but I am coming off of a cold, so I, I don't project normally very well, so I'm going to use the mic to my advantage. Uh, Krista, thanks so much for inviting me, and uh, thanks everybody for showing up. I see a few faces out there that I recognize, and uh, um, it's great to see, uh, see you folks. I know that when Krista had approached me about being part of the sustainability series, I definitely was interested in sharing. Uh, <laughs> some of the work that we've done and strategies, I, I think one of the challenges was well, what what project do I use to share or highlight some of the, the work that we do? And then the challenge was as well, how do we sort of present in a way that, you know, is not dull and boring, and, uh, but also uh, summarizes, because uh, uh, we do, we're general practice, we do, uh, I'm from South Bend originally, uh, have an office of Eight. And uh, one of my colleagues, Don Sporlitter, a uh, uh, boss and uh, out of undergraduate from Ball State, uh, worked for Carlos and Sporlitter for, well, as an intern and then as a full time staff member for three years, got my license, and then we collaborated in, at the University of Notre Dame and, and did some management teaching there. So uh, uh, Don was one of the first rails to trails uh, proponents, and it's, it's so cool to see how all of what you talk about, you know, connections, uh, 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 personal, uh, physical connections, and how how the, the trail systems are connecting communities and connecting lifestyles and healthy lifestyles, and I think is is a, is a great uh, sort of sustainable link to um, how we can connect with the out outdoors. Uh, I, I know that uh, a lot of what I learned was from Folks like Don, uh, uh, professors and colleagues, uh, that's what we do today is we, we collaborate. Uh, I, don't, I don't do my work alone, although I started off in my house in the extra bedroom in 1991. So last year we celebrated 25 years uh, as, as Keel Architecture and Planning. And that, that was, uh, uh, I guess I have to look back and you know, think of uh, all the cool projects that we've done. But, but it is collaboration. And uh, um, I went to Ball State uh, for my undergraduate, and then uh, Notre Dame for a graduate degree, and then I worked at Cole Associates after uh, uh, that, and then uh, started the office in '91. The project that I'm going to share with you tonight, the, the main focus is going to be on the uh, Uptown Artist Law uh, Rehabilitation in Downtown Michigan City. That project is uh, uh, was completed. Uh, about a year ago, uh, at the end of February was when we did our final closeout and they started occupancy. I think they were 30% occupied about a month after they opened and uh, uh, full up in, uh, in May of last year. So that they, they had a waiting list, 44 units, and about 5,000 square feet of uh, retail on the first floor. Uh, again, our, our background, we're a general practice. We do 
new construction, rehabilitation, uh, urban design, a lot of multifamily, and a lot of our, one of the things I wanted to touch on tonight is, is that the funding is really important on every project, and we have to respond to how the developers can make their projects real. If we ignore the funding, we do a lot of paper architecture. If we can understand how the funding works and provide the design services that adds value to the project for our uh, owner developer clients, that allows us to have an impact in our communities in a positive way. Uh, you can see we do a general uh, uh, work for municipalities, church and, and, park and a lot of park and rec work. We love doing recreation because we're recreating ourselves through that. Historic tax credits happens to be something we gain a fair amount of experience in. And this is a historic tax credit project for the art space project. I'll get into a little more detail. Um, dealing with code issues and variances and assessments. Uh, all that is, I think, in our full range of work. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of experience before we get into the art space project, the Mishawaka Junior Main Apartments in Mishawaka, likewise the rehabilitation, senior apartments, some interior shots, the Rushton Senior Apartments on the west side, uh, South Bend, just west of Central High, on uh, Washington, West Washington and William Street, the Notre Dame Center for Art and Culture, or Hansel uh, Center. This is the Fine Arts Print Workshop. Uh, Gary Auditorium and the Shoot Flight Museum on uh, Market, like Market Park on uh, Lake Michigan. So this is a major collaboration uh, uh, with uh, uh, City of Gary, uh, Aquatorium Society, uh, Hitchcock Design Group, and their team outdoor multi-use space, indoor museum on the lake. Paddle apartments in downtown Goshen. We do a lot of uh, infill, and this is habitat projects for St. Joe, uh, St. Joe's County Habitat for Housing, or for Humanities, uh, uh, infill housing of various types, as well as uh, custom single-family residential. This is one of the uh, projects in our new neighborhood. The Uptown Artist Law Project is a building built in 1924. Uh, it's called the Warren Building and was vacant for over 15 years. It's had empty, uh, started to take on water. Uh, art space, the developer, was identified by the, uh, this is sort of a fact sheet, the overview of was really a solid building, poor place concrete structure, um, essentially a multi-use building from its original sort of concept. It was a combination of residential, uh, a hotel at one time, offices on the, the second, uh, third floor, uh, part, part of the upper floors was a, was a clinic. Dr. Warren was the original developer, and then the first floor was the Montgomery Ward, so it was uh, really a combination building. A lot of Materials in the building were in good shape. Uh, Trousseau floors covering the bulk of the building. Exterior brick masonry and terracotta exterior was in, in, in very fair shape, even suffering some water damage uh, that was possibly repaired. In 19, or I'm sorry, in 2014, the funding for the housing tax credit component was awarded. We went through two rounds prior to 2014. Uh, prior to uh, the award and were, was unsuccessful. The housing tax credit program allows the developer to uh, <laughs> sell those tax credits to fund uh, rehab. And in this case, Artist Enterprise Lofts is the, uh, is the user group. So uh, one has to be an artist, and there's a broad category that, that falls under performing arts, visual. Visual arts is the primary user that they uh, uh, belong to the building. But also uh, illustrators, uh, musicians, uh, uh, visual artists, uh, filmmakers, and videographers. In January, then uh, all the funding was in place. The design was complete. We then started the construction, and then about uh, essentially a year, 15 months later, the construction was complete. This is a view 
of the completed project. And a lot of our work, especially our historic tax credit projects, we have to do research to find out about what we're dealing with. We did not have any drawings on the building. Uh, photos were, um, many, many times photos can be the only resource we have and the historic tax credit uh, option allows us to, uh, uh, for, for our developer clients, at 20% of the qualified expenses uh, sold as tax credits. So on a roughly $10 million building, approximately $2 million then can come back to the project as synthetic, synthetic equity. And that's a, that's a huge chunk of uh, underwriting to help a project move forward. This was an important photograph the shell of the building is going up, and there is a little shadow line on the point out here. We'll work with our structural engineers. See that little shadow line there, there, and there? That's a steel lintel that wraps the bottom of the concrete frame. And when we were seeing deterioration of the brick masonry, um, we identified that as uh, 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 the supporting system. We, did some investigation during the bidding phase, found out the steel was in very good shape. We've had projects where the steel is not in very good shape. We had to take quite a bit of the masonry off and replace that until on buildings that are 80 or 100 years old. In this case, it was in good shape, and uh, that was an important component. Since we didn't have any documentation on the building, so this is a view looking southwest. I'll go back to that. You can see the two canopies. This is uh, the words sign and the commercial entry, and then this is the residential or the hotel entry. And we recreated those because those were eliminated sometime in probably the 50s or 60s, and then in the 70s, a lot of bad architecture happened. And, um, <laughs> the storefront was bastardized. This is a view to the north and the west. The lake is in the distance. You can't quite see it given the exposure, but uh, Washington Park. And the connection to Franklin Street, well, connections are important to talk about that starting off. So um, there's a library now that blocks that, and uh, Washington Park is, is, is disconnected from the downtown. I think the master plan is that the library probably will, will be uh, replaced and, and moved, and then Franklin Street will then reconnect to the bridge that crosses Trail Creek and, and reconnect to the park. That, I think, is something that planners and the, the administration acknowledge now. The uh, building as designed was the National Green Building Certification Emerald Level. This was part of the historic tax credit funding application and working with our uh, sustainable uh, 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 consultant, uh, energy diagnostics out of Valparaiso. We, had to score points in terms of the design to meet the minimum level for Emerald. And these are the six categories. Like um, a number of other uh, uh, certification <laughs> programs is the other probably most, most familiar. The National Green Building Certification is one we use a lot on rehabilitation projects because it's, it seems to align uh, effectively and we can get the points that we need and get the, the levels. So that's what our office is uh, primarily familiar with. I know I see Marty is here, and I know Marty is uh, uh, familiar with think, all the programs, but primarily LEED, right? Is that the one that you work on? So, that, yeah, so that's something that, uh, you know, uh, our office, we usually engage uh, another consultant on that end, and then uh, we put together the design to align with the strategies. And I'll, I'll go through some of these specifics as we get into photographs and show how we accomplish that. But in general, it's sort of site lot design, uh, uh, sort of administration prep and, and, and development strategies, putting the team together. Number two, resource efficiencies in terms of materials and, 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 and salvaging and reusing materials or recycling, using recycled components, energy efficiency and the mechanical electrical plumbing systems, but I think also in, in uh, how they're used water efficiency for just moving water away from the envelope, but water within the building, and then stormwater uh, collection and retention into our environmental uh, quality. In many ways, that starts with uh, taking water away and making sure that that's controlled and, and, and not getting into you know, stagnant air and, and, and uh, uh, moisture and mold within the building. Uh, 
uh, as we start to button up our building, we have to deal with uh, uh, fresh air and, and making sure that's an important uh, component because people live and work in, in, in our structures. And then last but not least is just the education of the, the users and the maintenance of, of the building. The, 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 key. the folks that we know are key to every successful project, every building, are the maintenance staff and understanding what their needs are. It's important we take their input seriously and we always try and understand what's working, what's not working when we're dealing with clients that have existing buildings. Now this is a big vacant building, but it's managed by a uh, housing uh, uh, management company. And so we've been in, in, in close contact with them during the first year of operation just to make sure that the building is operating properly and that they've connected with uh, uh, how the systems work. So number one, lot design, preparation and development. This is an aerial showing the building. Orientation is uh, Franklin Street. This is east to the left. There's an alley along the north side. And the upper floors are L-shaped. And there's a small seven-story wing at the very top. And then a, a two-story wing fills out that L down low. This flips the orientation with north up you can see that L shape. This is during construction. You can see the staging area here. This will become the parking. And again, Franklin Street is the main drag. Our early schematic plans dealt with a, a tight zero lot line building. Essentially, when I say zero lot line, we have no yards against the building. It's uh, up against the sidewalk on Franklin Street. And there's an alley that's been vacated. It's a pedestrian walkway that, uh, as part of the plan. And then a service alley along the west side. The strategy on dealing with uh, uh, providing adjacent parking and uh, uh, retaining water on site, directing water from the roof to some. Uh, initially, we were talking about some cisterns, but uh, as we developed the plan, we we're using open biosoils and uh, permeable paint. As the building sort of engages with the, the main level, we wanted to understand how the building could more effectively deal with the uh, commercial component. In this case, Franklin Street is uh, on the east side, but we wanted to open up to the alley to the north. So we developed this early plan. We were talking about studio apartments or studio spaces. But in the final plan, those uh, studios were relocated here, studio apartments. And then this was turned into retail and the apartments, uh, uh, a couple of apartments along the back side. So this shows the developed, completed building with the new openings on the alley side. And the uh, parking with the bias oil and the permeable pavers out on the drive uh, between the parking stalls. Uh, project data and funding, uh, just a, 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 some things that I think whenever I talk to my young staff coming out of school, I always want to make sure that they, have, they always understand roughly how much of the buildings that they're working on cost to renovate. What's the square footage of the building? How big is it? How does it compare to other buildings that they've either studied in or houses? What does it compare to the house that they grew up in or the house that they're living in now? I think that's really important because unless you have that real sort of feel of the scale, it's, it's just abstract, right? So I always try and, and make sure that some of the basics are, are there. So the building's 73,000 square feet, 65,000 of it. So it's a, it's a roughly a six and a half story building. So it's uh, just a, about 10,000 square feet per floor. 65,000 was finished. We didn't finish the basement, but we cleaned it up and it's serviceable. That's where a lot of our mechanicals are, but it's, it's not a usable space uh, at this point. The funding stack, this is for the hard construction costs. It doesn't include architectural engineering fees, uh, financing developer fees, other soft costs like uh, uh, attorney's fees and, and uh, interest on some of the small uh, uh, loans. I think they have a small loan that's you know, part of the local community underwriting or, or uh, low income loans. Primarily housing tax credits is a good chunk of it. Historic tax credits, about 20% of what we call QRE or qualified rehabilitation expenses. 
local underwriting from community through donations or, or major partners in the area like Lipsco and some others who had, uh, had uh, underwritten uh, some of the common gallery space in the building and provided funds to help underwrite the non-housing part of the project. And the city of Michigan, uh, city of Michigan City kicked in some significant dollars to help with uh, site development, uh, assistance with the parking, the alley development, and then the top floor community room. Our team um, consists, of course, we, we start with the owner developer because without their ability to pull the project together, uh, we would not have a living. So Art Space out of Minneapolis, uh, they were great to work with. They developed over 40 projects. Half about uh, half of the buildings are rehabs. The other half are new construction. I have gone to two other Art Space projects. One in D.C. near Catholic University, that's a 40 unit building. And then in Chicago at switching stations, I think a 30 unit uh, rehab. Um, the artist enterprise projects, and that's essentially what they do. They don't do senior housing. They don't do for market rate or family housing. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a community, and um, you know, housing is affordable. Um, it's it's a, a way for these artists that may not make a lot of resources starting out to have good housing in units that are slightly oversized so they can do their, their work have a, a, a really wonderful, effective uh, a place to live and community in which to support each other. That's the coolest thing that I found out is the collaboration that exists among the, the uh, artists in this last year, getting to know the folks that are living with the Art Space Project in Michigan City. There's some pretty amazing stuff happening there. Uh, the City of Michigan City was a co-partner. Cool they uh, acquired the building and uh, sold it to Art Space at a very reasonable fee, otherwise the building had been demolished uh, over a period of time because it was taken on water. They also helped in the interim while the funding was in process in order to put a roof on it and to mothball the building for uh, a year and a half while the second application was going in for the housing tax credits. <coughs> our design team consists of our office as lead architect and preservation consultant. Um, I have Fantastic staff. Without their help, I would not be able to do really anything. Um, Leslie Annis was the project lead designer and project manager for the project, and, and the success of the project uh, is really relies upon all her hard efforts and focus throughout the project. Uh, she took a position and moved to Atlanta about halfway through construction, and so um, uh, Sam Lemon then took over and. Uh, between Dan Monbergen and Jennifer Feeney and Carolyn Miller and, and uh, Brian Keegan, a lot of the interns that worked with us, this project would not have happened. Our consultant team, Emmy Design for Mechanical Electrical, <laughs> Keller Engineering for Structural, Layman and Layman for Landscape Design, Haas Engineering for Civil and Site Engineering, and Energy Diagnostics for uh, Sustainability. <laughs> the contractor was Tom and Blank out of Michigan City. They were an amazing partner to work with and realized the project and, and Joel Gonzalez was the uh, site superintendent uh, with uh, uh, the office manager and staff, uh, John Gilmore uh, and, and the rest of the team. Resource efficiency. One of the things that um, is important is to make sure that uh, in order to gain points in a historic building, if you have good durable materials, of which many of the older buildings have better materials than the newer buildings uh, material uh, palette that we have. So fantastic uh, 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 brick and exterior terracotta, uh, uh, but in this case none of the windows were really worth saving. They were put in in the late 70s, early 80s, and so we went with 90% uh, new windows and then a, a small percentage where we have terrazzo floors existed throughout the stairways that you're looking down through this open stairway uh, where terrazzo they were repaired uh, the wood railings were repaired or replaced and the metal railings were uh, rust was removed and uh, primed and painted so that uh, i think is one of the ways that a lot of our historic buildings deal with the uh, 
resource efficiency. I think uh, recycled uh, materials in the demolition phase, you can see the uh, uh, staging area, the construction, uh, the dumpster with, in this case, uh, metals that was going to recycling. You can see the, uh, uh, I think the rubble, the concrete rubble, and the brick rubble is going to concrete recycling. This is pretty common in the industry, more common than what I had done when we worked. It was not as common, but now I think that it is something that uh, uh, is uh, becoming more of the norm, and that's a good thing. Uh, you, you still have to follow up on that and make sure the tickets are provided for the documentation. Existing trusses floors. When we first walked through the building, it wasn't evident that there was um, really anything but a concrete floor because it was so it was so dirty and there was a lot of uh, of just stuff in the building. But as we started to look around, we saw that there was some terrazzo. And as we got looking around further, it was really extensive, about 90% of the building. This was where some walls were, and it was uh, uh, the coat base was, was torn out and then we patched. And this is an example of the polished, uh, repaired and polished terrazzo flooring uh, in a typical apartment. Uh, energy efficiency is the third category. So LED lighting in the gallery space uh, was specified and implemented uh, along with some fluorescence in some areas, but primarily LED lighting. Sealed duct work throughout. High efficiency uh, heat pumps, so these are the condensers uh, mounted on the roof. Uh, we have other condensers on the second story roof. Then water efficiency, this is the water main, uh, fire and domestic, the backflow preventer. Uh, all new systems coming into the building, so uh, it's allowed, allowed us to design this to be uh, type effective. Water efficiency, in, in, in this particular case, an accessible bathroom, you can see the roll in the uh, shower. Uh, we have a, a low flow water uh, features, the, the, the lab, the water closet, and shower heads. And then out in the site, uh, the bioswale permeable pavers for the uh, stormwater system. And indoor environmental qualities again starts with properly shedding the water from the roof. In this case, we had a new roof that was put on. This is a that in process. And making sure it's properly shed. Some of the lintels, uh, there were a few lintels that uh, we didn't have to replace or, or get back in and add flashing. So this shows some of that. And uh, then top pointing the envelope of the masonry again, making sure water is uh, controlled, keeping it from getting into the wall. Because the building was built in 1924, we did not really have wall insulation to the level that we were designing the building today. So we were furring out the walls and adding an air and moisture uh, infiltration barrier at the perimeter. And here you can see some of the uh, Sealing of the envelope with the material transitions. Um, um, Chris Schwarzkopf, uh, our, our sustainability consultant, did lowered our tests on the building and he was incredibly impressed with the level of care and attention that the contractor took in uh, following our specs and, and buttoning up the envelope. Um, this was one of the highest rated uh, 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 lower road tests that he's had on the rehab building. Then documentation, in this case, uh, operation, the maintenance, building, owner education, and, and um, identifying here are our green initiative score sheet and uh, checklist, and then our green development plan that we developed as part of uh, one of the funding components. I think this particular one was uh, tied to Federal Home Loan Bank, which is another part of the funding stack. So I had to list the team, uh, um, redevelopment strategies, expected intended outcomes, uh, and then uh, our components that were selected, our points that we were looking to achieve, and then uh, the resident guide for uh, the user. That's really so critical. Things like uh, how to set your stat, how to deal with uh, clean components, uh, how to, how to uh, uh, you know, just, just use your space like you would use any other you know, tool or device, but uh, in this case, Education that we don't all have, but uh, in this case, it's a lot of new components, and so they need to understand how the, how the stuff works. Cut sheets on all the equipment. So 
So existing conditions, I'm just going to go through and serve what we found when we first cut to the building. But this was our vision. It was, again, taking that storefront. You can see the sort of a uh, boarded up windows and, and this sort of scalloped canopy that went across the whole facade and replaced the two projected canopies. You can see some of the windows up above were just sort of broken and open. We had some pigeons inside. That's pretty common. And then the finished pot. Before and then the after. The alley before and the alley after. The first floor lobby looking out east towards Franklin Street and the, and the stair to the right and the after. You can see the terracotta, I'm sorry, the terrazzo floor. It's not a surprise you couldn't walk in and didn't know it was terrazzo. But basically that was all there. This is the west facade towards the parking lot as the exposed concrete frame and the brick infill, sort of a utilitarian kind of look. This is not unlike, I think, uh, Kevin Smith's project that uh, uh, he presented, Building 113, which we had done some consulting with Kevin on that. This is a common construction type in the 1920s. The frame was in very good shape. Basically, we had some uh, work to do, but this is uh, uh, what we saw in terms of the upper terracotta. Very, very good shape, great durable material, something that we couldn't probably afford to do today, but uh, we have craftsmen that can uh, repair and, and cut point so it can last another 30 to 40 years. <laughs> it's a typical sort of uh, view from the inside, that, in, that, that stair from the first floor. Second floor, you can see the, uh, the plaster is just pulling down the expanded metal lath and just a lot of debris on the floor. View of the open stair. This is up at the sixth floor. The contractors painted the sixes on the, you know, the, the, the numbers just because there's, there's no signage that, that's convenient. This is a view to the west. Again, some significant deterioration on a lot of the plaster just falls and crumbles down on the, on the throttle. The steel's rusted, but that can be repaired. In some cases, replaced in sections. Rule post. This was cast iron, so we, we had to, um, we were able to find some components. Not all the caps were available, and we were able to go to the replacement companies that um, handle replacements based upon the molds from the original construction of the 20s. They used pattern books that architects picked from, and so we were able to find those and replace them. This is the fourth floor. Um, you can see the dentist chair. That was one of the upper level uses uh, in, uh, as a clinic. And that chair still exists in the basement. They, they salvaged that. One of the significant areas of deterioration was up at the upper floor of the west end where the plaster just disintegrated and it, so the water was washing down the uh, backup uh, uh, tile structural tile back up in this case you can see it's starting to flake off. So construction, um, the roof as it uh, stood when we first came to the building there was a big windstorm that it really pulled up the EPVM, basically a rubber membrane exposed the deck uh, I think 2013 uh, 20, uh, uh, and so the city came in and paid for uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars to put a new roof on there which required us to replace the deck, get down and uh, address some of the framing this is the uh, prep prior to putting on the final membrane and then that final membrane. That was before they even had all the funding in place. So the city stepped up in a big way to make sure that this building wasn't going to deteriorate further. That's probably the one thing that is important that we share with a lot of our clients. Um, we, we're doing probably three or four assessments right now of buildings that are either occupied that need some maintenance or buildings that are vacant that are being considered by developers for, for rehabilitation. So, so uh, some cleaning, demo and prep, construction of the exterior, uh, repair of the masonry and tuck pointing on the south side, opening up, uh, providing uh, a second internal stairways for uh, fire and life safety. Some of the uh, structural clay tile that was too far gone is being replaced with uh, concrete and masonry units for backup. 
then construction ongoing framing and core drilling for the, the new um, plumbing rough ends. Steel stud interior framing. You can see some of the mechanical rough ends. Uh, the electrical uh, uh, plumbing with uh, uh, the PEX uh, tubing, the blue and the red for hot water and cold water and the, and the, and the tub with the surround going in. We, not much historic fabric on the inside. You can saw a lot of the open views just looking from one end of the building to the other. We initially weren't able to secure uh, historic uh, approval of what's called part one for the historic tax credits, even though the exterior shell clearly qualified as a national registered building. So what we had to do was, um, when we talked with the state historic preservation officer and their staff, they said, well, the interior's been bastardized too, too much, even though you've got a little bit of this decorative plaster at the bottom of the entry stair and, and, and this one stair in the corner. You don't have any material there that would, would uh, allow it to be a single site nomination. So um, we, uh, with the city's help, they uh, updated and actually established a, a downtown district, and the building was eligible as a contributing member to Town Franklin Street District, and we were able to then uh, uh, get that part one, which allowed us to then apply for the uh, federal tax credits. So, not every solution is a straight path to uh, and simple. There's many uh, detours along the way. So, what we were able to find it was important for us to take care, and this is some of the decorative plaster components, and then the repair of those decorative plaster components. Some of the um, guardrails during construction and uh, then the staging of the front storefront. They ripped off that 60s uh, scalloped canopy and the new openings on the alley side. Other ways to repair up the west side of the facade. The terracotta, you can see some uh, repair. There's a keystone and where uh, the older um, 60s canopy had engaged. Uh, they had some steel beams sort of sliding in, so that had to be repaired. So Kowski was the contractor. They have some amazing craftsmen. And then we were able to replicate the sort of dark terracotta base components with new material here. And that was based upon a little bit that was existing. And so Interior stairway, some of the repair to the uh, marble steps, and then the finished product. Some of the upper floor corridors. See the systems going in, the orange pipe is the fire protection, uh, other electrical rough ends, and this is the grid that supports the hard ceiling. Some of the window repair, masonry. Uh, repair on the outside and the interior window construction. Some of the other repair was done off of uh, stage, stage scaffolding, in this case uh, off of a lift, and then the completed storefront. Renovated retail space waiting for tenants to move in. One of the tenants have uh, occupied the southeast corner. And then the storefronts off of the alley, which have since all been um, renovated. Again, the back side or the west side uh, parking lot and service alley. Dumpster enclosure in the back side of the building. The street front to the gallery space. The new, newly renovated entrance and new storefront. Original terracotta arch surround in the gallery space. This is the resident gallery where uh, every month uh, they have uh, a committee that uh, shows uh, the visual art and they do performing artists uh, work, uh, uh, music and, and, and plays, poetry, readings. They have First Friday too that's pretty active so if you ever get out to Michigan City it's, it's happening for sure. And as we go upstairs it's a view looking up and the corridors leading to the resident rooms unfinished apartment, more contemporary in its uh, interior finishes. Again, the 
new construction that does not need to be historic, actually, to qualify for historic tax credits. They don't want confusion between what was original and what is new. So uh, contemporary is, is very acceptable. And then one of the studio spaces within uh, one of the first four units in his living space. One of the performing artists, apartments. And you can see these people call this home. 